Let's go to Diane. We're gonna talk some stocks and uh, see what that energy is like at the New York Stock Exchange. Morning, Diane. How is it over there? Good morning. Pretty cool. Well, I think you heard some of the energy as the bell rang on Wall Street. You heard the shouts of USA. But it was kind of that energy was here when you walked in today. There was kind of this, it seems to be on the floor, there's this kind of giddiness and a nervous energy as well because there is, of course, a heightened security here at the New York Stock Exchange. Extra layers of security when you're coming in. I mean, this is normally a very secure building and has been the case uh, for many years, especially since 9 11, but today there was even more. There was layers of a secret service uh, at the entrance, at every entrance within and outside of the building. I even talked to one of his detail uh, in the ladies' room today. He has a surprising number of uh, female detail on his security team and his members of uh, the uh, secret service as well. It's interesting uh, to see that. One of the interesting conversations I had also with the, one of his detail was about the cost of living of all things. So mm -hmm. it's uh, every American that you you can think about uh, and that's you know one of the platforms that he was elected on he has a lot of supporters here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange if you did a lap around the floor you see lots of MAGA hats that have existed for years now they have increased uh, over time especially as we got closer to the election uh, this year and then there's been more kind of paraphernalia there's usually a flag a US flag outside of the Stock Exchange but today when you walked in there's a wall there's an LED wall and the wall was lit up with the flag of uh, oh, cool. America. I mean, it was a very patriotic tone uh, here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. So it's an interesting day. And, it, you know, when you think about it, it is a historic day in some respects, especially when you think about this is the second uh, president, president elect uh, coming to ring the opening bell previously. This hasn't happened since 1985. Uh, that was uh, former President R Ronald Reagan who rang the bell then. So this is the second president to do that. Uh, Bush has been down here. Bush Jr. has been down here on the floor before, but he didn't ring the bell. Uh, so it's a historic day in that sense. You didn't see on the bell the incoming uh, soon to be head of uh, Health and Human Services, the Department of Health and Human Services, RFK Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr., was actually here. I assume he is still here, but I know he wasn't on the podium just now. Uh, so it is, there is this, this feel, and even the crowds on the floor, it seems to be more than usual. So obviously there were some people who could be cleared, not just uh, Secret Service. Uh, seems to be some supporters on the floor, not just the kind of traditional traders who, who are here day in and day out. I love that. Great uh, color and great detail there. I like the uh, convo with the uh, security team. Love it. Um, and uh, it also, I will say, like when I was there a couple weeks ago, it just feels like very positive and, you know, it reflects, I think, markets too. And we just keep uh, ripping higher pretty much every day. And um, especially the uh, uh, notion that, you know, there's not like, it's not like every president goes down there to ring the bell. So I like the details, too, on who's, who's been down there uh, before. Uh, also, uh, you know, the only, uh, only the second, right, non-consecutive uh, president in, um, the, uh, in history. So, all right, he's coming back. And it seems traders are excited about it. Obviously, we just hit highs. We've been right below them yesterday. We were so close for the S&P. It was a big tech day. Uh, Palantir is one to watch here in that conversation. Amazon, too. Let's talk some of the movers this morning in the category of uh, big winners lately. Uh, T.D. Cowan says Amazon's a top pick. That's right, for 2025, it's Amy as a top pick. And keep in mind, Amazon has already run up this year more than 50%, but TD Cowan still has it as a top pick for 2025. Here's their thesis for it. Uh, they raised their price target, first of all, to 265 bucks a share. They have a buy rating already on the stock. Uh, here's the drivers behind it. They see continued operating a margin expansion. Uh, AWS, of course, we know that that's been a driver for Amazon. They see faster revenue growth there with AWS. AWS. I'm not surprised to see that we've seen other analysts kind of talk about the strength that we've seen with AWS. And they also talk about the cash pile. They said they're growing net cash, and that gives Amazon optionality when it comes to capital allocation. So that's the case behind it. They said, quote, if top line demand within the e-commerce biz and or AWS slows during a period of elevated investment, there is, you know, uh, it's somewhat of a bear case there, but that they see that could just limit margin expansion 
expansion over time. So there are some risks that they highlight, but overall they still see it as a top pick for 2025. And it has been one of the winners uh, year to date. Obviously, in terms of the Mag 7, it's, it hasn't run up as much as, say, NVIDIA, uh, but it has been a strong performer. It certainly hasn't been lagging when you say compare it to Alphabet. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, pretty reliable uh, winner that is kind of a kingmaker, too, with uh, the software companies pairing up with AWS. We saw a few of those stories the last couple of weeks really uh, moving uh, a few of the software plays. Uh, so whoever kind of can get in their aura is a winner as a result. Palantir has been a just total monster on its own right. Uh, tell me about this analyst note this morning, though, because it's still about five bucks, six bucks below the recent high. And I guess you could call this kind of a spicy take when it comes to Palantir. Yeah. Baird has initiated coverage of Palantir. They've initiated coverage, though, with a neutral rating. Their price target mm. is 70 bucks a share. So they see it getting a haircut from here. Now, Palantir shares moving higher right now, up more than 2.5%. And it has had massive growth this year. Palantir has been just, you know, rocking when you look at a year to date. I mean, the stock is up more than 300%. And think about if you go back to 2020. 22. I mean, it had a, a level, I mean, below 10 bucks a share. So this is a stock that has made a serious comeback. Now, Baird says that it, here's why they're neutral on this. They said the growth potential is offset by the valuation. And that's been some of the concern when it comes to how some analysts look at look at Palantir. They believe the valuation is a little bit stretched. But you have some bullish voices around Palantir. We talk to Dan Ives all the time of Wedbush. And uh, Dan is very bullish on Palantir. Uh, he said says that he sees, quote, unprecedented demand as more enterprise realizes the value of its entire product suite with more AI use cases. And he's compared uh, Palantir to, like, Messi uh, in terms of the AI yeah. growth story. I mean, I, th th I feel like the Messi uh, comparison he might be a little one. bit of stretch, but I could I could be wrong. Uh, and look, you know, B of A is also bullish. Bank of America is also bullish on Palantir. Uh, they have their price target uh, around where it is now, right now. They they do have a buy rating on the shares, but Baird, again, initiating it with a neutral rating. Okay. Yeah, Palantir, uh, 75 bucks, $70 uh, initiation, not going to exactly uh, juice it up, but I don't think it needs any analyst help. Things have been uh, powerful. Yeah, on its own right, up 3.5%. Uh, let's talk some sweets real quick. Mondelez and Hershey, uh, Diane, what's up? Yeah, so they've been in the headlines, obviously, recently because of Hershey being a target of Mondelez, an acquisition target. And this has happened before. This is not the first time Mondelez has targeted a company, and they've voted that down previously. So there is a high bar to reach. But they are facing some downgrades from the analyst community for both of them. Uh, Wells Fargo has downgraded Hershey to underweight from equal weight. Obviously, Hershey has a bigger, you know, target on its back. Their new price target for Wells Fargo is 160 bucks a share. Uh, Wells Fargo says Hershey's on the precipice of historic earnings pressure in 2025 and 2026. They've been faced with higher cocoa prices. They've talked about that as well. You know, off the back of their last earnings, they saw uh, earnings decline uh, from the previous year over year, uh, falling in the third quarter to 446 million adjusted earnings with two. 34 that had missed estimates, revenue declined, uh, that was weaker than expected. And again, that was attributed to high cocoa prices. And of course, they had talked about the consumer environment. Deutsche Bank downgrading Mondelez to a hold from a buy. They talked about that run-up in cocoa prices, although that wouldn't affect Mondelez as much. But they're targeting Hershey for an acquisition. If a deal happens, it would be a massive one. It would be the biggest one in the snack giant space in some time. Mm. Uh, but again, it does face some challenges because because it would need the approval of the Hershey Trust. And each time they've been a target, they've voted that down. And Mondelez tried to go after this back in 2016 during the first Trump administration. Uh, we'll see if it, if it comes to fruition during this one. Okay. Uh, you know, does Mondelez make some kind of like um, a cracker? I think they've got to, right? Yep, yep. Ritz, I mean, so, Ritz uh, that's okay. one of theirs, yep. So you're yeah. acquiring yeah. a chocolate company, you're a cracker company, yeah. it's like the s'more of deals. That's right. Now, that's yes. what I got. That's right. That's what they're hoping for. That's <laughs> what they're hoping for. I mean, again, Mondelez has, you know, they have uh, more diversity within their lineup than, say, compared to Hershey's. Yeah. Hershey's is, in general, Oreos. it's sweet treats, you know, yeah. it's sweets. 
you know. Um, but uh, but the idea, I guess, is that they would have both snacks and sweets uh, with an acquisition like this one. Uh, but the concern, again, with Mondelez is acquiring that they lose some of their just capital cushion. Hmm. Well, uh, shares in Hershey's back down, so they might have to sweeten the deal because market uh, has kind of <laughs> lost its uh, yeah, kind of lost its bid. All right, thanks. Appreciate it very much. Great stuff, Dan King Hall. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, walk through of the haps of the Nazi this morning too.